Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us and thanks for waiting a few minutes as we get set up. I think a few folks had a hard time joining, so resent the link and hopefully we'll be all set. Um, this is a masterclass with Gergu, and I wanted to just tell you a few reasons why we uh, had this organized for today. Uh, so first of all, I'm Emily and I'm from the ECDA and we're an NGO that works to amplify the power of progressive political parties and organizations in Europe through the use of digital tools and strategies. So the idea of today's event is to give you a preview of these tools and strategies with our expert here, Gergu, um, to talk about this magic space between what happens in the offline and what happens in the online and how organizations uh, such as yourselves can use these tools and use these strategy to um, empower the people that you already have to get more people involved and to amplify all of your actions themselves. So uh, uh, I'll hand the mic over to Gergu now, but there is a little box at the bottom for Q&A. And I just want to invite you throughout the talk to put any questions that you may have into that bottom. And that way, at the very end of our uh, presentation, uh, Gergu will answer uh, your questions. So uh, without further ado, I'll hand it over. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, yes, my name is Gergu. I'm from Hungary initially, but now I'm based in uh, Berlin. Uh, yeah, my background is just uh, two sentences. Uh, I'm basically coming from uh, uh, social work and social policy uh, uh, studies, uh, as well as like uh, community organizing and ground organizing. I spent more than 10 years uh, with uh, Roma communities all around Hungary. I also lived with uh, one of the most uh, disabandoned uh, uh, Roma settlement or Roma community in Hungary. And a couple of years ago, it's like six years ago, uh, with some of my friends, uh, we uh, we got uh, 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 into a digital organizing world as well. And now we are trying to combine both offline organizing and digital organizing at the same time. And today I'm gonna share some of our experiences uh, what we've learned so far, uh, mostly via existing uh, uh, examples, those campaigns that I've been uh, personally working on, uh, and maybe some other examples as well. Uh, so, uh, yes, let me share my screen. Emily, if possible. Yeah, thank you. So, let's see. Okay. So, yes. So, first of all, uh, again, a bit of uh, the Roma settlement story. Um, here you can see some pictures uh, on the left hand side uh, slide. Uh, back then, like more than 10 years ago, uh, I was living with the Roma community in a city called Ost in Hungary. And that's where we've been doing like uh, offline community organizing work with, 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 with this specific Roma community. What we've done amongst very many different things uh, is uh, was about uh, clearing uh, the community's debts because these people were living in uh, local government's owned uh, council uh, houses. And, uh, and they were paying or not paying uh, rents uh, properly. And uh, we managed to get, uh, get some fund uh, from OSI. Uh, and uh, with that uh, money, we were able to uh, renovate those uh, council houses uh, like big time uh, with the community. So these people organized themselves and uh, they were working in working groups and they were like refurbishing, renovating their own slash council uh, uh, houses. After this, uh, we contacted uh, the local government as well as uh, the uh, uh, power supplier, like the electric uh, power supplier uh, company. And we said that uh, uh, we spent a lot of money, uh, including volunteer work, uh, in order to uh, renovate these uh, 
council uh, properties. So now we want to uh, ask the local government to uh, uh, to uh, to basically cancel uh, the debts of this community. Uh, both the local government and the power supplier uh, agreed, so they were somehow uh, open to this idea. Uh, and we also uh, come up uh, came up with a debt management framework, whatever. At the end of this project, more than uh, 60 families uh, were kind of escaped or saved from that temporarily. Right hand side of the slide, uh, you see uh, a movement called Sikra, uh, also from Hungary. Sikra means spark. It's a, a progressive uh, or more like left uh, political movement in Hungary. Uh, and they are running amongst very many different campa campaigns. They are running uh, a campaign uh, around, uh, it's a policy change campaign about the new legislation of debt collectors or bailiffs or executors on a national level. Uh, the reason I, I put these two different uh, 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 stories here is because uh, back then what we've done with this small Roma community was really about somehow supporting this specific community uh, with only offline organizing methods. So uh, yeah, the reason uh, I, I put uh, uh, these two stories here, so uh, what the Spark or Sikra movement is doing is combining, as far as I know, because I'm not part of the movement, unfortunately, but they are combining offline uh, or grand organizing methods with uh, very, uh, very conscious and professional digital organizing methods so that they can scale up their, their policy change campaign. Uh, and I brought uh, uh, a specific use case, uh, what, uh, what we did in our organization, which is called Ahong uh, in Hungary. Uh, on the surface, it's a petition platform. So we are uh, running uh, different online petitions and mail to target campaigns, as well as uh, letting uh, other people or organizations or informal groups to launch their own uh, uh, online campaigns. So back then, it was more like uh, five years ago now, uh, we've launched a campaign about uh, home care fee allowance. Home care fee uh, is a state benefit, basically, uh, uh, for people who are looking after their disabled relatives, disabled loved, loved ones. More than 50,000 people, uh, meaning households, uh, are affected. And uh, the money they got back then uh, from the state was around 100 euros. And it's a nonstop uh, uh, work in most of the cases. So these people, uh, these carers, these home carers uh, were getting around 100 euros for basically a 24 hours work. Our campaign was about uh, increasing this uh, amount of the state benefit, as well as considering this uh, uh, this uh, this care uh, as, as work, as official work. Like in very many other countries, uh, a state uh, uh, considers it's, uh, this, this, this work as official job, basically. So we've launched a petition uh, with uh, other organizations. We've been promoting it a lot. Um, and uh, we were like, you know, uh, uh, um, collecting uh, different uh, uh, NGOs uh, who were, uh, most of them were happy to happy to join. But that was the main, as a first step, the, the online petition was the core uh, uh, element of the campaign in order to reach out to more and more people, both affected or just pro uh, uh, people who were like uh, sympathizing with, with, this, with this issue. Uh, we also organized uh, small protests or flash mobs and marches. And here, for example, you can see uh, lots of uh, A4 papers. So what we've done during the campaign at some point, we've been collecting uh, testimonials from people who signed our online petition. Uh, and we asked them uh, via email, we asked them to, to send us some stories, uh, tell us uh, 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 an average day 
of their of their care work or whatever they wanted to highlight we were collecting these testimonials and also visualized them uh, on the streets as well as in the media so it's very important uh, when it comes to uh, for example uh, an online petition that uh, we also uh, have journalists to find uh, those people who are happy to tell their stories uh, to a to the, to a to a website or a, or a print uh, paper. So we've been uh, we've put a lot of eff effort into this because we realized that a lot of journalists uh, are happy to cover the story, but they are struggling to find uh, those who are like happy to tell uh, their story. Uh, we also made uh, some public opinion polls. Uh, we fundraised for this uh, for these activities or tactics uh, from the actual uh, petition uh, signers, uh, which was more than fifty thousand uh, uh, in the middle of uh, of the campaign. We we did this influencer uh, uh, videos as well, and we were also able to uh, find people uh, who were at some point happy to like stand up and tell their stories during March and, and different protests and offline events. And those people, it's very important. They are not activists, right? So they are not like, or they were not like uh, well-known activists. They, they weren't visible, but by, uh, uh, by time uh, we were able to like convince them maybe uh, to, to, to come up and, and stand up. Um, we also made it to the parliament with uh, the help of some opposition um, uh, MPs. Uh, uh, here we are saying that uh, we, we are waiting for this uh, 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 increase uh, since uh, nearly 2000 days and whatnot. Uh, more and more uh, opposition MPs started to talk about uh, our campaign. And uh, yes, the pheasant. Uh, so uh, since we, we've been regularly emailing our petition uh, 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 so people who are who, who have uh, signed our petition, uh, a day uh, a man contacted us saying that, hey, I'm running a hunting lodge uh, in Hungary and very, very high profile government officials, ministers, state secretaries are coming to my place and hunting during the during the weekend. You know, in I, th I think in, in your countries, uh, uh, maybe it's the same. So politicians love uh, killing uh, animals uh, by bullets, most preferably. So this 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 guy said that I'm also affected. Uh, we are looking after our disabled uh, child. Uh, but I'm also running this uh, hunting lodge, and I'm happy to uh, give the printed version of the petition or any other message that you want into the hands of these uh, uh, politicians and decision makers. And he did it. And by coincidence, it was really like our lucky day uh, or days. This specific hunting uh, where people uh, uh, met our petition um it was a it was a sunday and next monday uh the parliament uh that's when we made it to the parliament and we were able to distribute these uh, uh, uh printed versions of the petition and also managed to uh put the petition on each desks of uh of of, of the hungarian uh, mps so those people you know met uh this this text this ask uh, uh twice uh, once during their holiday and then in work. Uh, so uh, at the end of the campaign, uh, we've managed to make uh, like uh, nearly 300 million euro uh, policy change during the, uh, uh, you know, the, 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 the Fidesz uh, uh, government, uh, government. And, uh, and you know, I mean, uh, it was, it didn't really fit uh, the, uh, I mean, uh, 
not increasing the state benefit, especially for those who are looking after their children, uh, not increasing this amount was uh, uh, not really fitting into, into the Fidesz family-friendly or family-first agenda. It wasn't a 100% success because only those got, uh, to, uh, got this increase who are looking after their children. So basically it's half, roughly half of the home carrier community. So it was partly a success, but we still consider it as a, as a huge success. And uh, most importantly, what I didn't uh, talk about is uh, what happened before this online uh, campaign. Uh, so here you can see Anet Chordash, who was the protagonist of, of, this, uh, of this campaign. And she and uh, her uh, uh, colleagues and friends uh, uh, spent more than five years of community organizing work uh, in order to, you know, uh, reach uh, these uh, specific goals. Which means that uh, without her work and their work, uh, we wouldn't have succeeded at all together. But we only succeeded because of this online uh, uh, tactics and online campaign combined with the Grand Oid organizing group. Uh, and I think it's very important to keep in mind and that's what I'm trying to talk about uh, today. So now put it more into uh, uh, context. Uh, what we see or what we think, what we've learned is uh, that uh, theory of change is really depending or relies uh, on the collective force of mass uh, citizen particip participation, uh, which means that uh, uh, to grow a so-called outside power, our staff uh, cannot make it, right? So we need people, uh, uh, we need other people who, 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 who we can involve uh, into, into our campaigns. Um, and it also means uh, that we have to test our messages when it comes to social media, email communication, and whatnot. It has to be very regular. We have to set up very clear uh, benchmarks. For example, when it can, comes to unsubscribe rates, uh, whatever we are sending out, like an email, uh, if it's over, I mean, the unsubscribe rate is over, in general, as a rule of thumb, over 1%. Uh, or 1.2%, uh, we say that it's not a good email. Uh, people somehow, for some reason, don't resonate or don't uh, agree. So we have to modify our message or our angle. Um, and also uh, these anecdotal inputs that we are collecting from people, I think it's very, very important. Uh, and uh, yeah, just let me show this one here because I think this is this is a very, very good example of what I'm trying to talk about. The sticker campaign during this home care fee campaign. So at some point uh, during the campaign, a kind of well-known state secretary reacted to our campaign saying that, okay, we are just Soros agents and we are hiding. Uh, uh, and now we are coming up with this random home care fee campaign but anyway we know who you are you are just sort of and uh, you know by the time there were already more than i don't know fifty thousand uh, signatures so people who can be who, who we could uh, uh, reach out to and we use this opportunity to uh, uh, to come up uh, with the next uh, step uh, in our campaign and uh, first we and we do this a lot, and I really, really uh, recommend uh, to do this as much as you can. Ask your members, ask your supporters, your followers, your audience, however you call them. Because for example, here we did like, okay, this is scandalous. That's what the state secretary reacted. Now we have to amplify our voice and whatnot. Uh, what's next? And we, 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 uh, uh, we came up three different potential next steps or tactics. And people um, uh, voted for uh, the sticker campaign. So that was the uh, uh, most popular idea. Okay, sticker campaign, good. Then we came up, came up three different uh, visuals, three different creatives. 
uh, for the stickers, actually. And we asked them again, OK, you decided this. Now we provide like three different uh, visuals. Uh, what would you like? What, what, should, what should we do? On, what should we put on those stickers? People voted again. OK, now we need to print out those stickers. Again, contacted the people uh, and asked money for, uh, for the stickers. At the end, uh, uh, we were able to print more than 10,000 stickers. OK, people, whoever wants uh, uh, stickers, uh, provide uh, your postal address uh, for us, and we will send you those stickers in your uh, uh, mail address. And uh, at the end, it was more than uh, 3, 000, uh, 300, uh, no, sorry, more than 200 uh, settlements uh, where people were, you know, putting these stickers in their neighborhoods. Because we also asked them to, to, to send us back the, the photo proof. Uh, and uh, it's these 200 settlements, it's only uh, that we know of, right? So it, it, it should have been uh, more than this. Um, and you know, this was like, I don't know, three to five different email within like a very short period of time. But the unsubscribe rate uh, were very, very low, uh, and the uh, and the willingness uh, of you know uh, donating, uh, putting up uh, the stickers, and voting uh, at all uh, was very, very uh, high. So here I'm saying that uh, in order to do such uh, 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 tactics, or in order to like implement such tactics. It's very important to operate on a low bureaucracy and high empowerment uh, management model. Uh, uh, otherwise, uh, these very small tactics could take like weeks and weeks and weeks and we don't have that much time. And full spectrum in this case means like uh, uh, use all, your, all of your members' assets and knowledge as well, uh, as well as like, you know, uh, asking for their uh, opinions and you know we didn't know uh, these people again but we were able to basically mobilize uh, uh, more than at least 200 uh, people offline so these people really went to the street and installed stickers etc they were also collecting uh, signatures uh, offline so we also asked people to print it out just uh, uh, ask your family members and your hairdresser whatnot to sign the petition and it was again more than uh more than 300 uh settlements uh where we uh, got uh, uh, uh offline uh, petitions uh, back uh and it was 100 percent uh, digital organized so um yeah uh so in this case what we just sorry uh just a sec um yes so what i'm trying to uh, say here is like uh, these campaigns uh, are not working uh, uh, without uh, without these people uh, contributions um and you we can only get so many people on board uh, with digital organizing um and as you can here maybe or realize um i'm talking a lot uh, about emailing and uh here i think at ecda we are really trying to kind of uh, evangelize uh the importance of uh, collecting email addresses and why do we think that uh what we what we found uh both with ecda and with my organization ahong is that uh email is still thriving in a way. So uh, uh, the number of email addresses is growing and growing and growing. And, uh, and you know, uh, that's where you can really own your data. So you cannot own like your Facebook data, basically, or your Instagram data, or your TikTok data. And those social media tactics are also very, very important. But email seems to be the most um, uh, um the easiest way to communicate your messages to fundraise basically 
This is also the most effective way of fundraising, um, as well as testing. So when we are talking about you know shaping and modifying our messages, we always do this uh, uh, testing phase, which means that you know in order to increase our uh, opening rate or open rate, we have to test subject lines. I think most of you are doing it or like know about this, uh, but still I want to highlight that uh, testing is crucial. So you can test you know your subject line, you can test your email body with or without picture. You can also test, uh, um, for example, the preview of your email, which is also increasing your open rate uh, and whatnot. And you can do it like, uh, yeah, on different segments of your, of, your, of your mailing list. So we see email as the key element of digital organizing. Uh, and, oh yeah, and I skipped the, uh, skip this one uh it's very important that you know you can increase your email list via online petitions mail to target campaigns mail to target means when you, you are enabling people to send an email to a specific decision makers right um but also whenever you are doing like uh, any offline events it's it's a must to collect uh to collect uh, uh, email addresses and phone numbers maybe um yeah and you can uh, also collect emails via webinars quiz and whatnot it's really up to you how to how to grow your list obviously online petition is the is the easiest and the cheapest uh, uh way of collecting email addresses to our best knowledge i will talk about this later a bit more uh and you know you are doing this list building phase but also you have to engage your your members, we call them members. Uh, and uh, what I think a lot of organization is missing is the importance of regularity. So um, if you want to really engage people and build a strong uh, membership, you have to email them regularly, which means at least twice a week, one or once or twice a week which means like a full list mail. Uh, and, you know, you can always come up with some news, updates and whatnot, uh, but it's also very important to uh, use as many actionable email as you can. So for example, click to sign a petition, click to send a, an email, click here to leave a message on the decision makers uh, Facebook page or Instagram page or whatnot. So it's 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 really crucial to to keep uh, your members active. You can also survey them, uh, and as I mentioned, you can ask their opinion about different next steps or visuals or whatever. And that's how uh, you will find more and more people who can be like involved more and to can be trained for like more professional activists or volunteers. Um, and 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 of course the importance of fundraising uh, is like also I cannot really uh, put enough stress on this uh, because we want to be independent from for-profit entities as well as parties uh, and uh, and you know uh, uh, small donor uh, fundraising uh, is is the best uh, way to achieve this independence. In our case at Ahong now we are like 90% member funded. So we have like more than 600,000 subscribers uh, and basically they are uh, maintaining our organization. Uh, and uh, it's uh, it's really a doable thing. So it, for us, it took around five years, but, but, uh, but it's not only us who are able to do that. Lots of organizations all around the world are doing it um yeah so uh back to uh, uh the importance of emailing yeah and the other thing is um what we also see uh so at the moment uh us uh, at ahong but as we can see in all our network it's really hard to reach out to uh, younger generations but it's like uh, it's like really, really a general issue basically everywhere and obviously, we 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 won't uh, uh, get them uh, via email, so it's more like social media. Who knows what else? Um, 
but they are also gonna have uh, email addresses they actually do have uh, because they have to create different social media accounts uh, and they uh, buy things online uh, and they will be entering to a professional career life where, where email address is a must again because BlackRock or IBM or whoever won't let uh, them to communicate with their clients via, you know, Messenger or WhatsApp. Uh, and the numbers in general around the world uh, show that uh, uh, that this uh, level of uh, uh, email address usage is still increasing like rapidly. Um, yeah, and just another quick detour about uh, emails, uh, what we call uh, what we call like increased dynamic content solutions. It's a weird, I mean, it's, yeah, it's, it's a term technique. But this basically means that uh, the future looks like uh, people will do different things more and more within their email client. So it means that, uh, for example, you can you know reply to a, a Google Calendar invite without leaving your email client, right? But you can also uh, now you know fill in quizzes. Or, or you can also like uh, uh, calculate your loan, for example. And you know it's very important because because uh, it also means that uh, you will or you are able to like you know uh, sign online petitions uh, with one click, and you don't have to navigate yourself to another external landing page, uh, which is crucial, especially when it comes to like uh, uh, online donations, so fundraising. Uh, so the conversion rate of uh, fundraising email will uh, be way bigger uh, once we will be more able to do such techniques like, you know, you can like one-click donate without leaving your email clients. It's very, very important. So that's another uh, reason uh, for us uh, uh, still sticking to, to collecting email addresses. Uh, Yes, and uh, back to the uh, online petition topic. Um, it's also very important to keep in mind that um, that we are kind of like the lucky or privileged one person who is dealing with politics at least, I don't know, 10 hours a week or more. And most of the people are not like us. Which also means that I think we don't want to communicate, uh, or we, we 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 don't want to really like, uh, uh, yeah, communicate uh, to the high profile, politically very very well uh, prepared uh, intellectuals or journalists, let's say, uh, but we want to communicate with average people which also means that we don't have to be afraid of losing our reputation, for example, when it comes to online petition. Another thing that I found uh, very interesting in the last couple of years, whenever I'm working with other organizations, is this fear of losing reputation uh, in case they are coming up with different random online petitions or where to target campaigns or whatever online activity because they say that you know it's like uh, it's not professional people sign it online petition doesn't make a difference which is true in itself it doesn't but as you can see it's just a very very first step and a very small uh, tactic in order to organize a bigger scale campaign uh, so and to be very honest uh, we had the same feeling back then like six years ago and then we realized that uh, uh, that uh, our assumptions was were, were wrong. So people are signing online petitions. People uh, uh, don't care if you come up with more and more different petitions. Maybe journalists do, and maybe your peer group uh, um, do, but uh, but in general, people don't. And here you can see some numbers. Uh, we keep asking our uh, membership about you know how many newsletters they are subscribed to. And uh, 
it's an ongoing survey that we are sending out to our new subscribers. And after these nearly six years of operation, that's the number, which is like crazy, but 70, more than 70% of our uh, subscribers slash members uh, are only subscribed uh, uh, maximum five newsletters, which is crazy because I think uh, we here are, I'm sure that we are subscribed like dozens or hundreds or yeah, or even more. Uh, and also actually uh, our um, subscri subscribers are uh, coming mostly from the countryside. So outside of Budapest, two thirds of them uh, are not living in the capital. Uh, and yeah, and here you can see that, you know, these people are really uh, getting information uh, uh, from us basically. And uh, and they are also getting some chance of doing something from us. Uh, so I just wanted to stop here for a bit, just to again uh, highlight uh, that uh, it's very important to think outside of our boxes and outside of our peer group. Um, yes. Uh, so what one of our sister orgs say uh, is like, we are not an online organization. We are, campaigning. we are a campaigning community that using the internet. Uh, and yeah, and very, very quickly another use case, and then uh, uh, we can open the discussion or we can pose some additional questions into the chat uh, box. So what we also did uh, with Ahong was uh, organizing uh, 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 a primary election process. So here in Hungary, there is no official uh, official primary elections, but uh, opposition parties decided to uh, select their one candidate, their joint one candidates against the Fidesz candidate. So they, they decided to uh, organize uh, uh, primary elections in order to find and select those candidates. And Ahong, our organization uh, uh, was providing uh, uh, a digital framework for this process, including offline and online voting system, including managing more than 10,000 volunteers on the ground, including tracking different uh, offline voting ballots, voting tents, uh, because they were moving uh, in most of the cases. So it was a huge uh, online infrastructure uh that was able to like deliver uh this participatory uh process at the end it resulted uh, uh more than 8100 voters uh actually the political narrative uh amongst opposition parties is uh, maybe different than ours because they are saying that uh you know uh or a lot of like political scientists slash politician uh, suggest that uh it wasn't a good way of selecting these candidates for several reasons. I don't want to go into it, uh, but, uh, but you know, as a participatory pro pro uh, process, it was a huge success. The reason I'm telling it is because, uh, you know, we were only able to organize this and actually very important, sorry. So it was more than 10,000 volunteers on the ground uh, and Ahong, so our organization, uh, provided more than 5,000 of those volunteers. So the rest 5,000 came from the six opposition parties, but uh, the half of it was coming, coming from AHOC. So we delegated uh, those, uh, those volunteers, which is again, very important. Um, so the only reason we could do this uh, after around uh, four years of operation is this model that I'm talking about. So via different online actions, petitions, collecting email addresses, uh, involving members to do lower, higher bar actions, uh, you know, big numbers result, uh, uh, I mean, big online numbers result bigger numbers offline as well. So that's how we were able to mobilize, organize and mobilize uh, that many volunteers and voters. And I think it's very, um, uh, um, important uh, to keep in mind that uh, that we have to keep uh, campaigning and keep doing different online 
uh, activities and actions. So here are some cheap pictures. So for example, here with one of the uh, opposition parties, we were uh, uh, organizing and, and, and training uh, more than 1,000 uh, online operators. So these were the people who were actually uh, uh, checked uh, voters' identity, like uh, 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 live uh, via uh, via computers and tablets. Uh, and here are some pictures about the vote counters. So it was a civil coalition, of course. So there were a specific organization who were uh, preparing people to count the votes. Uh, and again, more than here again, it was more than 1,000 people who were coming and counting the actual uh, ballots. Uh, yes. And just a couple of sentences about the criticism of uh, of of, of uh, digital uh, organizing is mostly, I think, about those orgs who are solely focusing or mostly focusing on digital organizing uh, or mobilizing, um, which is which 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 can be dangerous. But it, it happens to politicians as well, maybe to to civil organizations as well, to, you know, this, this Facebook likes uh, uh, politics. So uh, here in Hungary, for example, a lot of opposition uh, um, politician uh, thinks that uh, Facebook, um, collecting Facebook likes uh, is something. So it's like a political achievement, which is, of course, not. Um, so yeah, and we also, to be very honest, uh, at some stage, we also realized that we kind of uh, uh, forgot uh, ground organizing because we were really, really focusing on digital first uh, communication and organizing. But now I think that uh, we also got back and, 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 and starting to be more offline as well. Uh, but it's very, very, yeah, it's, it's really a danger and the criticism is, is, is fair. Um, but I think the most important thing is to use uh, whichever uh, online tool you use, you just have to use them very stra strategically, which means that uh, uh, mm, you know you we have to very, very consciously select uh, what to use and what uh, not to use. So for example, Slack is a good example. Uh, we are using Slack uh, internally, but we realize that we are not able to uh, get our members uh, to our Slack uh, uh, workspace uh, because they are not there yet. Uh, and uh, instead, we realized that maybe uh, Facebook groups were better or, or, or Google groups or, or whatever. Um, and, uh, and yeah, uh, I mean, just the uh, last couple of sentences is like uh, uh, the difference between organizing and mobilizing uh, uh, by Becky Bond um, is like, uh, so she, you know, Becky Bond is, uh, was, uh, or is um, one of the uh, main coordinator of the Bernie Sanders campaign in uh, 2016. And, uh, and, uh, and she's saying, you know, the Bernie campaign, uh, um, try to do organizing a bit different compared to Obama campaign, which was a very, very community organized based campaign, uh, especially the 2008 one. And uh, the Saunders campaign uh, relied more on digital organizing, but at the same time, of course, they were able to or uh, organize a lot of people on the ground as well. So what she says that uh, is that like uh, most of our campaigns are in the organizing phase, most of the time. And uh, she considers mobilizing only when a binary yes or no opportunity uh, rises uh, that can actually solve uh, the real issue for real, um, which is like, you know, I mean, I'm not 100% sure of this, but, uh, but, uh, but obviously when you are collecting different like, uh, um, 
capacities and you are strengthening your 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 campaign and your argument and whatnot. Uh, obviously, it's more like an organizing work, and then you can mobilize people uh, to the streets or to do something like uh, 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 I don't know, uh, bigger offline actions or marches or rallies or whatever. Um, but it's very important to keep in mind when we are organizing and when we are mobilizing. And whenever we are planning a campaign, we have to really distinguish those different uh, phases of, of, uh, of our campaign. Um, yes, and as Becky says, uh, we have to spend a lot of time uh, with organizing uh, and uh, and then uh, spending so uh, when mobilizing, then we are like spending our power, uh, which I think I was talking about a lot. How to like accumulate this 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 power? Um, so yeah, and what she says at the end, uh, it's a, I think it's an important uh, quote from her, is like the under twenty five crowd understood the notion that Facebook doesn't win elections that posting to social media doesn't move votes. What we needed to do was use social media slash emailing to organize people to actually do the one-on-one -on -one water contact that's proven to have the biggest impact on moving voters to the polls. That work is going door to door, getting on the phone and talking to voters live. So yes, that's an important note from Becky. And uh, I think that was it from my side. And let's see if you have any questions. Thanks, Gergu. It's definitely hard to fit in 45 minutes all that there is to say and provide a preview on uh, on the importance of, of digital organizing and this, this, this magic space indeed between what happens on and what happens offline. So thanks for that. Um, if there are any questions that you guys want to pose, you can put them down in the, uh, the Q&A box. And I also want to invite you all to reach out to us as well um, via email. So uh, at ECDA, we have different ways that we can, we can support you. So uh, these kind of public webinars, um, we have blogs, we have uh, other things online that you can take advantage of. And then we also have the opportunity to consult with you one-on-one. -on -one. So if uh, something that you heard today, something that you saw today, I'm hoping stimulated some interest and uh, is motivating to think, you know, your organization is, is ready to enact some of these best practices. You guys are ready to learn more. You're ready to take the next step. Please uh, reach out to us via email and we can, we can set up a talk uh, uh, with you to see, to see what it is that you can do or any other questions you may have. Are there any questions in general? Again, I know we, we went through a lot uh, today, but let me know if there's anything in particular. Okay. Um, I do also want to let you know that uh, we're doing another webinar this week. So, and thanks for your patience at the beginning of this one. It was a bit of a slow start. I think the, the first link in the, the reminder email wasn't the correct one. Uh, so thanks for your patience today. Uh, but we would like to invite you, we're doing another uh, event uh, same time on Thursday. And this one's about GDPR and compliance. So again, it's for organizations, it's for political parties, it's for anyone who's um, it's a really nice introduction, actually, to a really heavy, complex topic, um, and Julio is going to be leading that uh, this Thursday. So other than that, um, like I said, we also have uh, up on our website other events. We have a newsletter as well um, that I would invite you to sign up for if you haven't already. Uh, I'll put some links here into the chat and um, also on, on social media, on our website. Um, you know, we really, really uh, believe in sharing the insight that we have with progressive organizations and especially with elections coming up this year. It's a really, uh, really key year for, for a lot of uh, local organizations and parties. So um, we're happy to hear from you 
Oh, it looks like we do have a question. Uh, thank you. I'll pop this up for you, Gergu. So uh, question here is about how to make digital organizing in an environment where offline organi organizing and mobilization is impossible. Uh, so mentioning a place like, uh, like Belarus. And then another question here about data gathering, emails, and numbers. <laughs> and yes, I would recommend attending the GDPR webinar for sure. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, to be very, very honest, this is the hardest question that uh, uh, you can you can ask. And uh, I'll be honest, uh, I don't know, because if if uh, if we are talking about Belarus, uh, I think it's a very good question, because this kind of methodology that I described uh, is. I would say mostly working in like uh not a democratic environment that but uh but an environment uh where you are still able to like you know uh, gather offline and mobilize and organize offline so um so i would say uh i don't have experience around this sorry why but that's the truth yeah and um I would definitely recommend here. So for this question, um, you know, we have case studies and different organizations that we've worked with that have had uh, different sorts of uh, complexities, let's say, and um, unique aspects. So be curious, though, if, if, if you want to get in touch and tell us a bit about uh, where you work and, and what it is that you do. questions okay uh, if that's it thanks again for joining us uh, looking forward to hearing from you so so feedback um, we'll share the recording from today and some uh, some takeaways from today's talk so that you can have that in your inbox and uh, Stay tuned for the next uh, webinar that we're doing this week, if you can. Thank you.